Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you some useful tips and tricks using the FMC CDU. It's something a lot of people have requested for me to do, uh, so I thought I'd show you some of the exercises we show our cadets during the type rating to familiarise themselves with the FMC. Now to do this I've simulated a flight from Luton to Palma de Biorca. We're on runway 26 all ready for departure and we're going to do the Compton 3 Bravo departure. Now all the exercises I'm completing in this tutorial you can find in the video description below and you can join me uh, after the standard instrument departure after I've completed the after takeoff checklist for the first exercise. Okay guys, so I've just completed the after takeoff checklist. We're level at 5,000 feet on the QNH of 1014 on the Compton 3 Bravo departure. And if I bring up the SID chart, you can see we have to maintain 5,000 feet all the way till Compton VOR. And you can see that's represented by an altitude restriction in the FMC. You can see at Compton 5,000 feet. Now it's very unusual we'd have to maintain that altitude the whole time. We'd probably get cleared to a higher altitude in reality out of Luton a lot sooner depending on traffic. So let's imagine we've been cleared to climb to flight level 180, something like that. So what you do is set it here. Uh, we'll set standard because it's a flight level, so we have QNH 1013. And we'll select VNAV to climb. But notice how the aircraft isn't actually climbing. It's maintaining 5,000 feet, even though I push VNAV to climb. All it's doing is accelerating to 250 knots, which is the econ climb speed, uh, while maintaining 250 knots below flight level 100. Now, the reason it's not climbing, despite the fact we've been cleared high, is because we've got the restrictions in the FMC. We've still got the Compton VOR at 5,000 feet. Now, you have two ways of deleting this restriction in the FMC. Uh, the one, well, one way is simply press delete, and you can press delete here, the aircraft will then climb, but it's a lot easier uh, to simply push the out into vent button on the FMC. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you what happens. I'll push out into vent, watch what happens to the FMAs in pitch. Out into vent, it deletes the altitude restriction at Compton. Get N1 and V now speed, and the aircraft will now climb unrestricted to flight level 180. So it is important if you select an SID in the FMC, it usually matches all the restrictions on the um, departure charts. You must then delete the charts individually as you get cleared to a higher flight level. There you go, because so we're very light, we're climbing like a bat out of hell. And that's not that unusual to see very high flight levels. A lot of people think that's quite unrealistic, but if you've got a very light aircraft, you might get something now uh, as we approach uh, our econ climb speed. So the next uh, exercise I want to show you uh, in the climb page is max climb and max angle. Uh, another thing as well, you can see on this routing, uh, Compton Vapid. Well, if it was very busy in London, uh, which it usually is, you'd ha you uh, would expect to do the full routing, but it is very likely that you'd get a shortcut. Let's imagine we've been cleared direct to Vapid. Now, let's bring up the FMC again in more detail. Uh, all we have to do to fly direct to a new point is select the waypoint and bring it to line select key one left. And doing so and executing deletes the previous restriction. You can see now the aircraft is going to turn direct to rapid 180. Uh, just do something called the pre cruise checks as we approach flight level 100. So we'll check the fuel lights, APU is off, pressurization is set, seatbelts, whoops, they're already in auto, they should have been off and the, the pre-crease checks are complete. So, uh, let's do the next exercise. We'll look in the FMC, uh, the climb, max rate and max angle, okay? So, uh, if ATC in real life told us to uh, expedite our climb, the function we would use is max rate. Now, max rate will give us the uh, shortest amount of time to get to a flight level. So, if we had to get to 180 in the quickest time, we'd use max rate. So, if I select it and execute it, it'll pitch for the max rate speed, which today is 258 knots, okay. And once you've completed that, we'd go back to Econ and execute. Now, Econ is the most efficient climb speed based on our cost index. You can see the Econ climb speed is 285 knots. Now, if I bring up the legs page again, you can see at Vapid, uh, we should pass Vapid at flight level 222. Now, let's imagine that uh, ATC cleared us to climb flight level 230 and we must be leveled by Vapid. So what I'll do, I'll set 230 there, and you can see at Vapid, we're gonna be at 220. So 
if we need to make a altitude restriction to be at or above, we use the max angle function. So if I go back to climb, press max angle. Remember just before it said vapid at 219er. Let's use max angle and execute. You can see now it's pitching for the max angle speed, which is 258 knots. And you can see, yeah, still not got to quite make it, 230228. Now, in real life, if that was a restriction given to ATC, we'd probably mention we'll go for something like flight deck to sim. Uh, we're going to struggle to make flight level 230 at VAP. It's going to be quite close, and they'll probably vector us, give us a heading to keep clear of traffic. So that's max rate and max angle. We'll go back to the econ climb speed. Okay, excellent. So uh, next then, I'll re... Uh, get back to you at top of climb at flight level 370 and we'll look at some more exercises there. Okie dokie, so I've just reached flight level 370 approaching a waypoint called Sitet which you can see here on the FMC and you look on this map here, Sitet is the FIR boundary between London and Paris FIR. So approaching Sitet, London would hand us over to Paris. Now let's imagine that Paris has asked us to climb to flight level 390. So firstly, we need to check our operational flight plan, see if it's beneficial for us to go higher, if we can save some fuel. Now generally the higher you go, the more fuel you save. Now you have a very useful function here called STEP. And if you put flight level 390 there, you get some information, which eventually comes up. There we go, fuel savings of 3.7%. Whoa, 11.4% apparently, which I find quite hard to believe, but... Uh, Oh, there we go, back to 3.7. Not sure what's going on there. Now, 3.7 is a, a lot more realistic, uh, but obviously that doesn't take into account any tailwind or headwind component. You can see today is quite a headwind. Uh, oh, now we've lost it all together. I think that's just a bit of a glitching with my sim, perhaps. But uh, there we go, back to 3.7. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see if we... I'll show you how we can go to a higher uh, cruise level of 390. Now, the first thing you need to do uh, is set it in the MCP altitude. This is the, the master... Uh, if you can see here, so 390 is now set. Now we have two ways of putting that in the cruise altitude window. We can again push out into vent or type it in here by putting cruise altitude and then you can click execute. But it is just far easier all the time. Go back to cruise just to push out into vent like this. Oh, there we go, boom, 390. You've got N1 and V now speed. Now the aircraft will climb flight level 390. Unrelated to the FMC, but don't forget to do it. Make sure you reset the pressurization panel to flight level 390 as well. So we have 390 to check essentially three times. Once, twice here, and three times on the PFD. Okay guys, so we're now at flight level 390, which is our final cruise level for the day. Now let's show you how you can find uh, VOR frequencies using the FMC. So you can currently see uh, on the ND we're routing towards Amboise or Alpha Mike Bravo, which is a VOR to the southwest of Paris. Now you can actually use the FMC to find the frequency for the VOR to tune it up manually. And now to do that, firstly you can line select key Alpha Mike Bravo to put it in the scratch pad. If you select init ref, uh, then index, top right you have nav data, and then you can put any waypoint that's in the database and get all the information. So if I put Alpha Mike Bravo in the nav aid ident, uh, oh, I could, yes, PMDG has the database for the entire globe's waypoints now. Do, usually, certainly our fleet, we only have the European waypoints, so it's definitely not the one in Santiago. Now, I know that the Amboise um, VOR is 113.7, so I could uh, see that information there, 113.7. So if I remember that, close that, and uh, as by convenience, it's the standby frequency. Uh, so I could select it straight away. And you can see here, watch the needles, there you go, they just watch the needles move, and we've got Ambars 110, and the green arrow is pointing directly to the Ambars VOR. So that's how you can use the FMC to find navigational data such as frequencies for VORs. You can also use it to find the ILS frequencies as well. So uh, now we're routing towards Ambars VOR. Uh, let's play around a little bit with that waypoint in the FMC. Uh, if I go to plan display, bring up the ND, you can see where it is and if I zoom out you can see where we are, we're currently inbound to the Ambar's VOR. Now to create waypoints off this you can very simply create waypoints before and after. Now to create a waypoint let's say 10 miles before Ambar's, simply select it, put slash and then you put minus 10 
and that will create uh, Amboise 01. You can see if I zoom in, exactly 10 miles before Amboise then, we've got that new waypoint 01. You could execute it and that become the active waypoint, so we'll do that. And you can see that like, Amboise 01, that's currently where we're routing to. That's good at that. Uh, also, you can create a waypoint afterwards. Instead of putting minus, you just put plus. Uh, sorry, don't have to put the plus. You just put a positive figure. So if you put Amboise slash 10 instead of Amboise slash minus 10, you can see there afterwards, 10 miles after Amboise, there's a new waypoint. That's now called Amboise 02. So you can create waypoints uh, doing that. You can also create any waypoint using the existing VOR on any radial and distance. So let's say, uh, take the Amboise VOR uh, VO and make one on the 090 radial. So if I put Amboise 090, and then you put a slash and you can put any DME distance you like, you can even put a decimal point, so let's put 5.8 miles randomly, and uh, bring that to the top, base it on that VOR, and you can see there, look, on the 090 radial, the distance I put, we've created a new waypoint, and then you can route direct to it. Uh, and really, sky, sky's the limit, you can create any waypoint you like off any existing waypoint in the FMC. And that's what we do when we're under radar vectors, to give VNAV really good guidance in descent. Uh, that's how you can use that function there. Okay, the next exercise, guys, I'm going to show you how we can intercept a radial on a VOR using the FMC. So let's imagine ATC contacted us and told us, uh, Flight Deck to Sim, please could you fly direct to the Alpha Mike Bravo VOR inbound on the 360 radial. So let's bring up the FMC. Uh, if I just line select the AMBARs and again line select it to uh, one left, you see this intercept course uh, box pops up. Now you need to put the inbound course in. So if we've been told to fly on the 360 radial, we take the reciprocal of that, which is 180. So if I type in 180 here, line select key it, and you can see on your ND, oh, we've gone into control wheel steering roll because it's spat out LNAV. It shouldn't do that. So we'll just go to heading select to select a roll mode. Anyway, you can see here if I bring up the ND and whoop, move the FMC back over here and you can see this white dashed line and essentially what it's done is created a dashed line off the 360 radial so if I go to plan there you can see that dashed line going all the way up to north now if I execute that you can see that magenta line just goes off there and we've been told to intercept it so what we do we turn a heading onto the magenta line you can see the aircraft banks and heading select and then when the wings are level we would reselect LNAV and then the aircraft would intercept the radial 360 flying inbound to Ambars on the 180 uh, and that's how you could intercept uh, VOR radial, radial using the FMC intercept course. If I re-engage LNAV, roll wings level, fly in a straight line until intercepting that magenta line. Uh, for now we'll just route direct to Ambars and execute. Now that's a very unusual clearance, you'd only ever get routed to a VOR uh, if ATC were unable to give you vectors or if uh, as an aircraft we were no longer, we'd say, RNAV compliant, we couldn't actually route to a uh, waypoint in the FMC, we'd have to route direct to a VOR or an NDB, just like they used to in the old days. Okie dokie, so the next exercise I want to show you is uh, a little bit of information about the fix page in the FMC. So if I bring up the FMC here, here select fix, you get the fix page. And what you can do, you can type in any waypoint in the navigational database and get information about that waypoint with regards to your present position. So uh, if I bring up the operational flight plan, remember we're routing direct to the Amboise VOR Alpha Mike Bravo. And you can see we have an en route waypoint in between there called Benar. So let's imagine ATC contacted us and said, could you tell us what your ETA is of being Benar? So if I bring that to the top, you can see there, if I bring up the ND as well, there's Benar, to put a nice little green circle around it, which is quite convenient. Now if I press the beam function, it will tell us exactly when we pass Benar what the time is, uh, the current beam radial we're on and the distance from our en route track, and distance to go from there and our current altitude. So we could tell ATC, yes, flight deck to sim, we're going to pass the Benar VOR at 0728. Now if you wanted to create a waypoint off that, you can line select here the beam point and all that information is filled up there. And if I just bring that to the top, you can see, by zooming closely, I've created a waypoint on the magenta line. 
and you can see we're slightly off the magenta line, it should be exactly on it, but I think that's again a slight misfeature of the PMDG. But that's another way you can create waypoints as well. And you might have seen on my other tutorials, I used the fix page to put information about the runway in use on the arrival. So if I go back to legs, you can see all the way at Palmer to Mallorca, runway 24 right, I'd select fix there, and then I put rings on based on how I'd like to configure for the approach. So that's how we use the fix page. Now there's six pages available to you for, for the fix page, I think. Uh, I only have two available for my operator, maybe that's an option by going, I'm not too sure. But yeah, that's the fix page. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to cover is the offset routing function. Now this is a function which is seldom used, I've certainly never used it in my six years experience on the line. Uh, but it is available, uh, essentially what it does, it takes you off your routing by a set distance and then you can join your uh, flight plan in the FMC at a set waypoint. Uh, now generally this would be given to you by ATC if they had very much congested airspace on your routing. Uh, but generally in real life they just give you vectors uh, and vector you around traffic. But let's imagine ATC has contacted us and they said flight deck to sim, if you could please offset your routing three miles to the left and then you can join your routing back at Bebix. Now to find that function you need to select the route page. You can see here at the bottom right uh, it says offset. Now if I simply select that, and let's say uh, they told us to go three miles to the left. Uh, if I put three lima, bring that to the top and you can see there, if I bring up the ND, turning to the left and that's three miles between uh, your current routing. Then you could simply type in where you'd start that or uh, end it. So we want to start it straight away let's say we'd like to join our flight plan back at Bebix so you put end waypoint you can see there look it joins back up at Bebix so that's the offset routing function which is available like I've said I've never used it uh, but it is there to use in the FMC okay so on the next exercise I want to discuss some information available on the cruise page this is from a couple of questions I've had uh, asked in the last couple of weeks or so now firstly on the uh, left I want to discuss this uh, figure here, the Turbin 1 figure of 88.9%. Now this figure of 88.9% is what we'd set if we were in severe turbulence. So we'd actually disconnect the order throttle and just simply set 88.9%. That's because the order throttle would really struggle to maintain speed in uh, severe turbulence. The speed would be going up and down, up and down. So we'd simply disconnect the order throttle, set this figure, it should give us uh, a decent margin from high speed and low speed. We probably want to descend in that case as well. Uh, lastly, I want to show you this other page which someone asked me about, and that's the engine out feature. So if you had an engine failure at flight level 390, you can probably guess we cannot maintain flight level 390 with one engine inoperative. So let's imagine the right engine had failed. We'd select engine out, right engine out, and here we have some information. Now this is information only. This isn't set by the aircraft. We'd have to input this information manually. So we'd have to descend to at least flight level 249, we'd have to set 99.4% on the operative engine, we'd then uh, have to uh, descend at 230 knots, and we'd use level change, and we call this the drift down procedure. And as we would descend, as we approach now flight level 250, the aircraft would initially start pitching up, and we could maintain flight level 250 with one engine uh, inoperative, that's the highest altitude we could maintain. So that's the drift down procedure. You can find a bit more information about that in the PMDG flight crew training manual. So guys, uh, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. That really was brushing the surface on the FMC. Now if I was to include all the information, uh, talking about things like the hold page, the descent page, I'd probably need two hours to go into as much detail I would do for a normal type rating and they will have dedicated tutorials to explain the information available to you. But for now I hope you found that interesting and learned something new about the FMC. As always if you have any questions feel free to leave that in the comments section. Uh, I have made another playlist, I've called it the virtual type rating where I'm going to be doing lots of exercises included in the type rating for you to follow using the PMT GX. Don't forget to like and subscribe, fly safe and I'll see you again very soon.